Starlink Rain, the space race in China's steady approach to space exploration. Crash. Why are sky-high satellites collectively committing suicide? Is the space land grab backfiring on humanity? Hi everyone, I'm Old Lu, and today I'm bringing you some explosive news. Elon Musk's Starlink satellites have been having a collective tantrum recently. Thousands of satellites have been streaking across the sky like a meteor shower. These once priceless space assets have now turned into space bombs. This isn't science fiction, it's a real space disaster unfolding in 2025. Since 2019, Musk has been launching satellites into space like scattering beans, and so far, 583 satellites have retired prematurely. While it's normal for satellites to have a lifespan, this large-scale fall is definitely not simple. According to internal sources, the culprit behind this incident is none other than a solar storm. Intense solar activity interfered with the satellite's orbital control, causing them to lose direction like they were drunk and eventually plummet into the atmosphere. This Starlink rain has not only cost Musk tens of billions of dollars but has also exposed the brutal reality of the competition for space resources. Orbital resources in space are limited, whoever occupies them first wins. Musk's Starlink project is essentially a spaceland grab, he aims to monopolize low-Earth orbit resources by launching tens of thousands of satellites. But this aggressive approach not only wastes resources but also creates a large amount of space debris, threatening the safety of other countries' spacecraft. Next, we will delve deeper into the reasons behind this space disaster, compare it with China's steady space strategy, and see why China's slow and meticulous work is truly the more brilliant approach. I had the space game behind the Starlink rain. In July and October 2021, the Starlink 1095 and Starlink 2305 satellites deployed by Space Exploration Technologies Corporation SpaceX, successively experienced abnormal orbital deviations, approaching the Chinese space station without warning. According to information filed with the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space, COPUOS, the closest distances during the two approaches were 712 meters and 582 meters, respectively, both below the internationally recognized safe threshold of 1,000 meters. This posed a substantial threat to the lives of the three astronauts and the Chinese space station. To avoid a catastrophic collision, the China Manned Space Agency decisively initiated an emergency avoidance procedure, successfully maneuvering the space station out of the danger zone through precise orbital maneuvers. Facing inquiries from the international community, SpaceX not only failed to reflect on its mismanagement of orbital control but also unilaterally declared in its report to the United Nations that Starlink satellite activities did not meet emergency collision criteria, attempting to shift the blame to the complexity of the space environment. This disregard for facts not only violates the Outer Space Treaty's fundamental principle of avoiding harmful interference, but also exposes the disregard for space safety responsibilities by some commercial space companies in their pursuit of low-cost expansion. The incident sparked strong condemnation from the international space community, with the European Space Agency, ESA, publicly calling for stricter space traffic management mechanisms, and the Russian space agency emphasizing the need to constrain the disorderly expansion of commercial space through international law. As of 2025, the Starlink project, led by SpaceX, has cumulatively launched over 4,000 satellites, building a massive low-Earth orbit satellite network. However, behind the impressive data lies a hidden concern, 583 of these satellites have retired prematurely due to technical malfunctions, orbital collision risks, or design flaws, resulting in a retirement rate as high as 14.6%. Even more noteworthy is that Starlink satellites have an average on-orbit lifespan of only about 3.5 years, less than 60% of their designed expectation. In contrast, China's independently developed Beidou navigation satellite system has demonstrated excellent reliability and stability, its overall system retirement rate is only 3.2%, and the average on-orbit lifespan of a single satellite exceeds 12 years, more than three times that of Starlink satellites. 
This data comparison not only highlights China's deep accumulation in core technologies such as satellite materials, precise control, and orbital management but also confirms the Beidou system's development philosophy of quality first, steady progress. Musk's Starlink project is like a grand spaceland grab, rapidly occupying low-Earth orbit space with a huge number of nearly 7,000 in-orbit satellites, seemingly seizing the initiative in commercial space development. But from a technical perspective, this quantity over quality expansion model is actually a risky gamble. To achieve low cost and rapid networking, Starlink satellites adopt a simplified design, with a single satellite manufacturing cost of only about $500,000, but this has led to an on orbit failure rate as high as 15%, far exceeding the average level of 5% for traditional commercial satellites. The two close approaches with Russia's Zvezda space station in 2022, and the over 200 pieces of space debris generated by the in-orbit disintegration of two Starlink satellites in November 2023, all confirm the safety hazards brought by this short-sighted approach. In contrast, China's space program has always adhered to the development philosophy of the safety first, quality supreme. In practice, by applying high-performance Hall electric propulsion systems, the on-orbit lifespan of satellites has been extended from the traditional 5 to 8 years to over 12 years. Active deorbiting technology ensures that satellites fall into the uninhabited South Pacific within 90 days after retirement. The Tianwen constellation, successfully launched in 2024, further reduces reliance on the number of satellites while improving data transmission efficiency through independently developed laser inter-satellite link technology. This development path which focuses on technological innovation and environmental protection, sets an example for the sustainable development of the global space industry. 2. China's Steady Approach to Space Exploration In 2024, the Chang'e 6 probe successfully completed humanity's first sample return mission from the far side of the moon, relying on its independently developed complex orbital design and high-precision sampling technology. The 1935.3 grams of precious lunar soil and core samples it brought back not only filled a gap in the geological study of the moon's far side but also showcased China's technological breakthroughs in deep space exploration. Adhering to the concept of peaceful use of outer space for the benefit of all humankind, Chinese space agencies have donated parts of the samples to 19 countries, including Russia, France, and Brazil, to jointly conduct research on the origin and evolution of the moon. This open and inclusive cooperative model has earned high praise and widespread trust from the international scientific community. In the commercial space sector, China's private entities are also showing vigorous development. Geely Holding Group founder Li Shufu's company, G-Space, has built Asia's first full-process satellite intelligent AIT center in Taizhou, Zhejiang. This center employs automated assembly, testing, and integration technologies, achieving an annual production capacity of 500 low-orbit satellites. Its launched G-Space series satellites have built an integrated space-ground information network covering the globe, not only providing high-precision navigation and real-time communication services for intelligent connected vehicles but also playing an important role in environmental monitoring, disaster early warning, and other fields. Marking China's private space industry's transition from the R&D exploration stage to a new stage of industrial application, China's satellite technology demonstrates unique advantages in durability and economics. By adopting independently developed high-reliability platforms and long-life components, China's average on-orbit satellite service life has exceeded 15 years, and some deep space probes continue to operate beyond their design lifespan, such as Chang'e 2 which continued to perform extended missions for nine years after completing its planned tasks. In contrast, Starlink satellites, constrained by their low-cost design philosophy, have an on-orbit lifespan of only five to seven years, requiring frequent fuel consumption for orbital maintenance and facing higher risks of space debris collisions. In terms of cost-effectiveness, China's space program achieves long-termism value through system engineering optimization. Although the cost per launch is relatively high due to the use of high-reliability launch vehicles and meticulous manufacturing processes, the overall life cycle cost is significantly reduced by the long-life design that reduces the need for repeated launches. 
Taking the Beidou 3 Global Navigation Satellite System as an example, its total construction cost was 30% lower than that of the US GPS system due to the use of one rocket, multiple satellites, networking launches and inter-satellite link technology. Yet, it achieved equivalent benchmarking in core indicators such as positioning accuracy and timing services, and even achieved local and service performance in the Asia-Pacific region, fully demonstrating the economic efficiency and foresight of China's aerospace technology roadmap. China's slow and meticulous work in space is not conservatism but wisdom. Take the Shijian-21 satellite as an example. This satellite successfully verified space debris mitigation technology by actively deorbiting a failed satellite. This meticulous maintenance of the space environment is a microcosm of China's high-quality development philosophy in space. According to statistics, the average design life of China's on-orbit satellites has reached 8.5 years, a 40% increase from 10 years ago. By adopting redundant design, radiation hardening, and other technologies, the single satellite failure rate has been reduced to 1.2 times the international advanced level, effectively reducing the generation of space debris and maintaining the sustainability of low Earth orbit. From an economic perspective, China's space program is reaping technological dividends by extending satellite service life, reducing the total life cycle cost of a single satellite by over 30%. More importantly, China always adheres to a global space governance vision of extensive consultation, joint contribution, and shared benefits. In the construction of the Beidou Navigation Satellite System, it has provided services to 137 countries and regions and established over 20 joint monitoring stations. The Chang'e 6 Lunar Sample Return Mission opened payload carrying applications to the world and conducted joint scientific exploration with countries like France and Italy. This friend circle model breaks down geopolitical barriers in space exploration, allowing more countries to share the benefits of aerospace technology development. In contrast, Musk's Starlink project has deployed over 7,000 satellites, and its high-density constellation layout not only crowds limited orbital resources but its satellites have repeatedly approached the Chinese space station, posing a serious security threat. This go-it-alone model is driven by commercial interests and disregards the carrying capacity of the space environment, essentially transforming outer space into a new arena of competition. Historical experience has shown that the large number of abandoned rocket debris generated by the space race in the 1960s still threatens active spacecraft at speeds of several kilometers per second. China's adherence to the peaceful use of outer space is the correct direction to avoid repeating past mistakes and achieve sustainable human space exploration. 3. The Future of the Space Resource Scramble The first-come, first-served orbital resource allocation principle formulated by the International Telecommunication Union ITU, was born in the 20th century when satellite technology was not yet widely popularized. Under this regulatory framework, Orbital frequencies are like scarce prime real estate, whoever completes technical deployment and seizes orbital coordinates first gains exclusive use rights. SpaceX, under Elon Musk, has exploited this regulatory loophole, leveraging the Starlink project to complete over 150 launches with Falcon 9 rockets between 2019 and 2024, sending nearly 8,000 low-Earth orbit satellites into space which accounts for two-thirds of the total in-orbit commercial satellites worldwide. This space land grab has triggered strong international reactions. In 2023, at the United Nations Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space meeting, more than 30 developing countries jointly submitted a resolution directly targeting SpaceX's preemptive deployment behavior. The Kenyan representative warned in his speech, when low-Earth orbit is filled with the satellite networks of a few companies, Countries like ours, which lack space capabilities, may not even be able to deploy a single weather satellite in the future. Data from the Brazilian Space Research Institute shows that the dense deployment of Starlink satellites has reduced available orbital frequency resources in South America by 42%, directly threatening the agricultural monitoring, disaster early warning, and other livelihood-related space projects being planned by developing countries. These countries fear that as the Matthew effect intensifies in low Earth orbit, space exploration will become the exclusive domain of a few technologically powerful nations, 
and the vision of common human development of the universe may become an empty talk. Currently, there are over 8,000 satellites in low Earth orbit, with 40% belonging to Starlink. According to Musk's plan, he will launch another 30,000 satellites, which will make low Earth orbit incredibly crowded and could even trigger cascading collision events. From a geopolitical dimension, Starlink has transcended traditional satellite communication and become a strategic tool for the United States to promote space hegemony, with its low-orbit deployment posing a potential threat to the safety of other countries' spacecraft. Technical commentators widely worry that this first-come, first-served space resource-grabbing model may upset the existing international space governance balance. Economically, Starlink's commercial expansion accelerates competition in the space industry, its low-cost launch and global coverage capabilities not only force traditional aerospace companies to innovate but also spark controversy over the fairness of space resource allocation. In social media, the public, while marveling at Starlink's technological innovation, remains vigilant about its militarization risks and privacy security issues. China's space program, in response, relies on steady technological research and development and international cooperation strategies, building an independent and controllable space system while actively promoting the improvement of multilateral space governance rules, demonstrating the responsibility of a major space power. The scramble for space resources has reached a fever pitch. While Musk's land grab has gained an advantage in the short term, in the long run, this rule-breaking approach will ultimately come at a cost. China's space program, through technological innovation and international cooperation, offers new ideas for the rational use of space resources. In the future, only through joint efforts and the establishment of a fair and reasonable space order can humanity ensure the sustainable development of space exploration. From Chang'e flying to the moon to Chang'e 6 collecting samples, every step of China's space program is writing history. We should not only be proud of China's achievements in space but also pay attention to the rational use of space resources. This Starlink rain has sounded the alarm, space is not anyone's private property but the common home of all humankind. What are your thoughts on this space race? Feel free to leave a comment and discuss. Let's all cheer for China's space program and contribute our strength to the future of human space exploration. Thank you all, and see you next time.